One of the new additions to surface mode brushes in 3D Coat as of build 4.0.06 is the angulator brush. If you hover over the tool here in the tool panel, you'll see a larger thumbnail that will give you a visual indication of what it does and a tool tip. So let's look at this in a pragmatic sense, exactly how will this help us. It allows you to pinch along a selection so there are many uses you could use for this. Instead of just free-forming it with just a, a brush like you would the regular pinch tool, this allows you to use that pinch with a bit more precision. Okay. You can paint select an area that you want to apply it to in the tool options panel and click apply. And just depending on how clean the stroke is, you may get a little bit too much. Let me undo. You can also hold the shift key and smooth that selection and turn steady stroke off. Okay, especially on the ends. And now hit apply. I'll undo. You can also hold the control key to invert, basically deselect. Hit apply. You can see how it works. Now that's a little bit rough. So let's go ahead and clear the selection. I can clear it here in the Tool Options panel, or just as you would in Photoshop, when you want to clear a selection, you would hit the Control D keyboard combination. Okay, so let's try to make this a little bit steadier. I'm going to check steady stroke. The longer the stroke, the higher the number value. Okay, so let's try this. And I'm also going to right click and bring my brush size down. I don't need that much. Okay. Okay. So that looks fine. I'll go ahead and hit apply. You see we got a, a little bit better result. I can undo and hold the shift key to smooth that in. This time I'm going to uncheck steady stroke. Okay. Hit apply we get a much better result. And I find that, as you notice, I made the end not too pointed, but I made it somewhat pointed here when I want to stop this abruptly. So let me point this out here. When I hold the shift key, let me make it a little bit more pointed instead of perfectly rounded. Okay, and hit apply. So we get a little bit nicer result. Okay, I'm going to undo, clear the selection. So let's say we wanted a nice crisp edge along the uh, end here. Hit undo. Let's um, go to the E panel, or I could hit the E key to bring it right to my cursor. Right here in the middle is probably the option I want to use. I want to point something else out though. If you want to use a freeform lasso or something like this, make sure that depth limit is unchecked in the E panel. And the reason for that is when you make a selection, you see how faint that is? It's not going to help me at all. So undo, uncheck depth limit, and now when you make your selection, it'll work just fine. If you don't want to go all the way through, make sure you check ignore back faces. Okay, that way it makes it only on one side. All right, so now let's go ahead and use our spline stroke draw mode. This one will just apply the selection to everything inside this spline. So if I hit escape and Go to my little toggle and hit apply or the enter key. You'll see it just fills everything within the closed spline. So I'll hit escape and I'll clear the selection. In this case, what I want to do is use the spline draw mode in the E panel. And I'll go in and create my points. And again, it's based on the brush radius you can see that reflected in the points. 
At any time, I can always increase the brush size on the fly, and it will change the points accordingly. Okay, so I'll hit Escape. Bring it back down. And to close this, I don't need to come over here and click on this again. I can just hit Escape and choose Close Spline. All right, so now you can see the spline is still a little bit too smooth. I want it to be all hard edge. So there are a couple different options I have to do this. Whenever you right click on one of these points, okay, it will change the type or the uh, spline type. Whenever this is going straight through like this, it's typically just a standard spline. It has a little bit of curvature, um, but if you right click a third time, now you'll notice it's a weighted spline, a B-spline. And by default, it's chosen as a B-spline. Okay, so it just cycles between the different spline types when you right click. So I can right click, now it's a regular spline, right click, it's a hard edge, right click a third time, it's a B-spline. So to recycle through those options, I just continue to right click until I get the type that I want. Or alternatively, I could use the spline points or the edit points table. Okay. And now you'll see each of these points are numbered. So I'll just go in. And there you go. All right. So now let's just go ahead and hit apply. I want to undo that. And I want to point out if you forgot to turn steady stroke off and it's still active, look what happens when you hit apply. Uh, you get a kind of a wonky result. Okay. And that will typically happen with many other operations if you leave steady stroke on. So make sure you uncheck that when you are not brushing and you know need that stabilization. Turn that off so you don't get strange behavior with other tools. Okay, so I'll undo that again. Now hit apply or the enter key. All right, we're looking good. So with that done, I can now hit the escape key to drop the spline. I still have my selection. And the green lines are basically your boundary. And I can simply hit apply, or I could smooth before I do this if I want. But in this case, I think I'll just go ahead and hit apply. Okay, it's not quite as sharp as I want. I'll just continue doing this until I'm close to the result I want. Now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It can look a little bit rough like this because what we're going to do is we're going to smooth this in just a moment. Okay, so let's clear the selection. We have a nice hard edge, but it's a little rough in some, some areas. Not to worry. Now what we need to do is we can go to the bottom of the tool panel and click Smooth All. But before we do this, I want to point out that uh, you can also hit the space bar to bring the tool panel directly to your cursor so you don't have to scroll through the tool panel like this. Uh, or you can set a hotkey for it if this is something you're going to use often. And you probably will when you click on it you'll notice you have some different options. You have tangent smoothing or relaxation. In this case, we have the option because we're working with hard edges. We can have 3D Coat keep sharp edges that appear as if they're a result of Boolean operations. In this case, we want a little bit of relaxation, but we don't want it to undo our hard creases too much. So in this case, I crank the smoothing degree up from one to four or five here, we'll be fine. And so with these options, I'll be fine. Now, tangent smoothing is essentially very similar to this option here. It actually relaxes, but it tries to keep the shape. So if you're working with details or hard edges, typically it will give you the same result. It will try to keep hard edges. So hit OK. And now you can see it's cleaning that up a little bit. So I assigned a hotkey to that, so I can just hit Shift S to bring that up, it memorizes the options I used last. Okay, and all right. 
So another option is I could choose uh, Tangent Smooth. Again, that's the same type of smoothing operation that I was considering. I can hold the Shift key. And it will help me kind of clean up some of these rough spots without taking away the, the crease that I have. Okay, so definitely give that a try on your next hard surface project and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.